I'm Dr. Frida. Today, I'm going to talk about five types of anxiety disorders. Are you a worrier? No, I don't mean, do you have appropriate concern? I mean, do you have excessive, consistent, persistent worry that causes you distress or even impairs your life? Let me ask you this. Have you ever locked the front door and you know you locked that front door, yet the thought of the possibility of it being unlocked drives you to go and lock it again and then to keep checking over and over again to make sure that it's locked? If the answer is yes, you may have an anxiety disorder. Today, I'm going to talk about five types of anxiety disorders. Keep watching. At the end of this video, I have a freebie for you that is guaranteed to make your life better. So be sure to keep watching. Anxiety disorder. First off, what is anxiety? Well, anxiety in and of itself is a normal part of life. It is a nervousness or an uneasiness in anticipation of an impending doom or a negative event it becomes an anxiety disorder when this excessive worry, this consistent, persistent intrusion of thoughts actually causes a distress or it impairs one's life. Some symptoms of anxiety disorders include excessive, persistent worry, difficulty sleeping, difficulty relaxing, forgetfulness, fatigue. You may get headaches, neck or shoulder pain, back pain, you may also get stomach aches or dizziness. Let's talk about five types of anxiety disorders. Generalized anxiety disorder. Now again, it is normal to have some worry, some anxiety, but generalized anxiety disorder is different. In generalized anxiety disorder, there is an excessive, consistent, persistent worry, which actually causes a great distress and it impairs a life's function. For example, if you are a person who does not have a job and you need a job, and now you are going on yet another job interview, but all of a sudden you have so much intense worry about things that may go wrong. You worry that the flight might crash on the way to the job interview. You worry that you might trip and fall down the stairs to your death while you're walking up the stairs in the building for the job interview. You worry that your suit might not be the right fit and that all the buttons may pop off and now you'll be humiliated and scrutinized by others. Then you worry that the boss may not like you just because you have red hair or because you have an afro. And then you start to worry that maybe the climate is not good for you because the job is in a place where there are lots of tornadoes. Now you have difficulty sleeping, you're irritable, and you get to the point where this intense Fear. This anxiety is so great that you cancel yet another job interview. This impairs your life because you need a job, but you can't get a job because of your generalized anxiety disorder. In order to have the diagnosis of generalized anxiety disorder, this impairing anxiety must occur more days than not and for at least six months. Generalized anxiety disorder is more common among women than men, and it's also common among patients with chronic pain, especially if the chronic pain cannot seem to be diagnosed medically. Obsessive compulsive disorder. Obsessive compulsive disorder used to be classified as an anxiety disorder, but now it actually has a classification of its own. But I'll still address it in this video because anxiety is so relevant in OCD. Obsessive compulsive disorder or OCD is characterized by repetitive, intrusive, persistent thoughts or urges. These are the obsessions. The obsessions cause anxiety. The anxiety must be relieved by the person with OCD performing repetitive behaviors or mental acts. These are the compulsions. 
Now, usually the obsessions or the urges are not warranted, but for the person with OCD, they absolutely must perform the compulsive act in order to relieve the anxiety. And usually there is a rigidity in these acts that must be completed in order to make the person with OCD feel whole. For example, if the obsession is contamination or feeling dirty, then the compulsion may be hand washing. Now, I don't mean the person who sits next to you in the cubicle who loves to use Purell or hand sanitizer every chance she gets. I mean a person who feels obsessed. They're constantly thinking about and worrying about being contaminated or dirty, and it drives them to wash their hands over and over again. Every time they touch something, they wash their hands. Every time they think about something getting on them, they wash their hands. And they'll wash their hands to the point of the hands becoming chafed and bleeding or even infected. This is an example of what someone with obsessive compulsive disorder might do. Another example of potential obsession is symmetry. If a person is obsessed with things being symmetrical and in order, the compulsion may be to count over and over again or to reorganize their pantry so that all the cans are in perfect balance in color and size. Or a person obsessed with symmetry may reorganize their towel closet over and over again so that all the towel sizes balance, all the towel colors balance, symmetry, and they're counting, they're counting to the point where these compulsions prevent them from doing other things, prevent them from being productive, so it becomes an impairment. In obsessive compulsive disorder, it usually starts in childhood or adolescence and lasts through life. 76% of people with obsessive compulsive disorder also have another anxiety disorder, such as generalized anxiety disorder. And 63% of patients with obsessive compulsive disorder have an associated mood disorder, most commonly major depressive disorder. Panic disorder. Panic disorder is characterized by an abrupt, spontaneous, intense fear that leads to physical symptoms such as chest pain, shortness of breath, hyperventilation. A panic attack can cause a person to feel like they are just extremely physically ill, and it often leads to them going to the emergency department. Panic attacks may be triggered by a traumatic event. For example, if a person has been bitten severely by a dog, then watching a movie like The Secret Life of Pets may actually trigger a panic attack. Or if a person has an extreme fear of flying, then watching a Delta commercial with a flight attendant may trigger the panic attack. Sometimes the panic attacks require no trigger at all, or sometimes the fear of having a panic attack can trigger a panic attack. Now that's messed up. Social anxiety disorder or social phobia. Social anxiety disorder is characterized by an intense fear of embarrassment, humiliation, scrutiny, judgment in social settings or in settings where one has to perform or speak. The intense anxiety or the fear caused by these social settings is so extreme that it will cause a person with social anxiety disorder to avoid these social settings, even if it's to the person's own detriment. For example, a person with social anxiety who is a technical person, say it's a person who works on computers all day and a person who is alone, he doesn't have to deal with other people. If he's doing really well in his job and now in order to get a grand job promotion, he has to make a presentation to others in the company, he may have such an intense fear of humiliation, of failing, of embarrassment, of scrutiny, that, may, that this person may opt not to do the presentation where he now forfeits getting the promotion and he may even risk losing his job, all because the social anxiety is so great. This is an example of what may happen in social anxiety disorder. The things that you do to avoid the anxiety actually impair your life. Post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD. PTSD 
can occur in a person who has lived through a trauma. And by trauma, I mean an event that has caused serious harm or even death, or an event that had the potential to cause serious harm, injury, or death. Some examples of patients who may suffer from PTSD, a veteran who has lived through a war, who has been shot, who has witnessed his or her friends die in a war. Also, a person who has been in a major car accident may develop PTSD, or a person who has survived a mass shooting. Patients with post-traumatic stress disorder can have symptoms of being very jumpy or easily startled. They can have difficulty sleeping, difficulty relaxing, or they can even have numbness where they have kind of a flat emotional response. Many patients with PTSD also have mood disorders such as major depressive disorders. And patients with PTSD who are not adequately managed, not treated, can be at high risk for trying to take their own lives. Fortunately, there are treatments for anxiety disorders. Depending on the specific type of anxiety disorder or the patient, the treatment will vary. So treatments include therapy, such as psychotherapy or cognitive behavioral therapy, or medications. There can be psychotropic drugs, antidepressants like selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, benzodiazepines. If any of these symptoms sound like they could affect you or a loved one, please consult your physician and get worked up. Find out if you could have anxiety disorder and what the best treatment for you might be. Now, I promised you at the beginning of this video that I have a freebie for you, and I do. If you click the link in the description, you will find a free download. It's a PDF on the 10 healthy habits for a better you and a better life. These are habits that I really live by myself, and I guarantee you, if you give it a chance, it can make your life better. If you have not done so already, please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification button so you know when I'm doing YouTube Lives. That's when I answer medical questions in real time. Also, please comment down below. Anxiety disorders are so common, but we don't really talk about them that often. If you've experienced an anxiety disorder or if you have any questions, please comment. I want to hear about it. As always, I thank you for watching and I want you to do your best to live your healthiest, happiest life. I'll see you next time. I'm Dr. Frida.